Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about the divine twins in Indo-European religion. Most of the old pagan religions in Europe were part of an original source, Proto-Indo-European religion. We can discover how this primordial religion looked like by comparing myths of different cultures and ethnic groups. Through this method, scholars have been able to reconstruct the entire pantheon of the primeval gods and goddesses. One of the central figures in the Indo-European pantheon is the Sky Father. He is also known by his reconstructed Proto-Indo-European term, Dios. The patriarch of the gods has an intricate web of family relatives, as it is well evidenced, for example, through both Vedic and Greek mythologies. Among these relatives, the sons of Dios are probably the most relevant ones. They are the divine twins. There is an unusual academic consensus around the ancient Indo-European origins of the divine twins. It is considered one of the few original myths within the primordial Proto-Indo-European pantheon. We can find the same divine twin figures in Greek, Vedic, Roman and Baltic mythology. They are the original sons of God. The Greek twins are called the Dios Kuroi, which literally means the sons of Zeus. Sometimes they are also called the Tindariai. The reason for this is that the twins may have had different fathers. One twin, Castor, has a mortal father, the king Tindareus, who is also the father of the famous Helen of Troy and Clytemnestra. The other twin, Polydeuces, is the son of Zeus, after he impregnated the mother, Leda, disguised as a swan. The twins are always represented as young men wearing a peculiar egg-shaped hat, the pillows. Castor and Polydeuces are associated with horses. This is an essential part of all the known depictions of the twins. In one case, Castor is addressed with the epithet Hippodamos, horse taming. In the Homeric hymns, the Dioscuroi are riders of swift steeds. Indeed, the twins always ride white horses, and the Greek poet Pindar talks about the gold chariot Castor. On the other side, we find the Ashvins, the Vedic divine twins. Refer always in the dual Ashvina, the Rig Veda contains more than 50 hymns devoted to them. The Ashvins may also be called by their individual names Nasatya and Dasra. Youthful, the Ashvins ride the chariot with horses, like the Dioskuroi. In fact, the same root, Ashvin, means having to do with horses, even though they are not directly the sons of Diaos, Peter, modern myth places Surya as their father, the Rig Veda presents the twins as the Divonapata, progeny of Diaos. Scholar Martin West compares this epithet with the Roman Jovis Nepotes, which reads so close to the Vedic one. The Roman connet of the Indo-European divine twins stems from the Greek Dioscroi, called Gemini, Castores, or Juvenes. Their worship is attested since the 6th century BC. The temple of Castor and Pollux stood in one of the most prominent areas in Rome. Like in the Greek and Vedic cases, the twins were sought for salvation and rescue in dangers at sea or in battle. The Homeric hymns, Alcaeus and the Rig Veda consistently depict the twins assisting mankind in many different ways. Worth mentioning, but not connected directly with the Dioscuroi and the Ashvins are Romulus and Remus, the legendary twins who founded the city of Rome. Sons of Rhea Silvia and the god Mars, some scholars think that Remus is part of much older mythical material related to the Indo-European Yemos. 
often called a solitary twin, Yemas is the primal being mentioned in the Edas as Ymir, in the Vedas as Yama, and in the Avesta, Yima. Yama or Yima is the son of the solar god Vivasvat or Vivarvant, which connects him with the sky origins of the Ashvins. Even though not all scholars accept Remus as a connet of Yemas, both twins were slain, and their killing contributed to the foundation of Rome with Remus and to the foundation of the world itself with Yemos. Moving on to the Baltic myth, we find the Lithuanian Dievo Suneliai and the Latvian Dievadeli, also called the Asvieniai in Lithuanian, they are the sons of God. Like their other Indo-European cognates, the Ashvienai also appear with horses and a chariot, which they use every morning to go to see the sun. This is a clear reference to the dawn, also known as the daughter of the sun. In the Baltic folklore, the Ashvienai rescued the dawn from sinking into the sea. The Vedic Ashvins are associated with the dawn as well, and she appears as their sister. It would seem that the Oscuroi have no dawn sister. Helen of Troy, daughter of the Tindarels king, sister of Castor, the mortal twin, might be part of an older myth in which Helen was the Proto-Indo-European Solena, daughter of the sun. In this case, like in the Vedic Ushas, Helen is not the daughter of the sun, but of the Sky Father. She is the Dios Fugater, daughter of Zeus, as Homer's Odyssey calls her. Although she appears as the mortal queen of Sparta, she was worshipped as a goddess in Laconia, in Rhodes, it's an island in Greece. This confirms all their origins as goddess of dawn. In her name's etymology lays the key for the connection with dawn. In two early Laconian dedications, Ellen appears as Felena. From there, German scholar Wilhelm Mannhardt establishes an etymological relationship with the Proto-Indo-European Suelena, the dawn goddess. Minor traces of the divine twins appear in other Indo-European settings. The Roman writer Tacitus identifies the Germanic twins Alcis as equivalent to the Juvenes. In Anglo-Saxon myth, the legendary twins Hengist and Horsa have strong echoes of the Dioscuroi. Descendants of the Good Wooden, they served King Vortigern for a while until they turned against him and led the Angles, Saxons and Jutes around Ken during the 5th century AD. The Divine Twins are probably one of the most relevant and consistent myths across all Indo-European religions. It is not only consistent in depicting the twins, sons of the Sky Father, accompanied by horses and driving a golden chariot. It was one of the most popular myths in the ancient world, especially in the Greco-Roman and Vedic traditions. The twins were protectors and rescuers at sea and in battle, perhaps two of the main dangers in antiquity. They were worshipped and invoked in prayer by many in moments of need or in thanksgiving once the danger had happily passed. The entire city of Rome, the most powerful city in late antiquity, had a special devotion and affection for the divine twins. And of course, the Divine Twins are always represented with their faithful companions, the White Horses. This is the quintessential Indo-European trait. Very Indo-European indeed.